Hello my little beauties, it's David Connolly here, season's greetings, and namespaces are bullshit. Um, I have here an Amazon Kindle first generation. Now, I think this could be the best Kindle that they ever made. This one has got speakers. Not only that, the screen is a perfect width for reading, fantastic ergonomic buttons, nice keys, it's a beauty. It's really great, you know? But you know, check it out. Empty battery. I have not switched this on for the best part of 10 years. Why is that? Well, it's because shortly after getting this, I got a hold of an iPad 2. And the iPad 2 is even better. It can let you pinch and zoom and change brightness and surf the web and everything. It's really cool. So, I never really used this that much. I moved on to the iPad 2. But then something funny happened. This is the, you can see yourself there, can you? Uh, there we go. This is the BlackBerry Passport. Arguably the greatest phone ever made. Interestingly, the screen is roughly the same width as the Kindle, and it's got a square screen, and unlike the iPad, you could carry this one about and read books in the park or whatever, and uh, for a while this became my device and, you know, for reading ebooks. And I wish they would make these again because it's a really, really great phone. Um, I'm kind of into battery life. It comes in handy. So I actually didn't stick with that for quite as long as I should have um, because, unfortunately, BlackBerry went under or whatever. So, I ended up switching to this one for a while. You've probably never heard of this. This is a Wikitel, and at the time it had the most powerful battery on any phone, so this thing could work on any smartphone. This thing could work for a week at a time, no problem, and it was really good for reading. And then, I discovered that I really liked reading on my um, MacBook Air. Turns out it's just nice, the weight, the screen, everything about it is nice, you know? So, this Kindle thing is not really a bad thing. It's just that I don't have room in my life for this particular thing. And it's exactly the same when it comes to namespaces. Namespaces solve a problem that, by my experience at least, does not exist. It's a hypothetical problem. And I think that the people who are so, how can I say this, so eagerly pushing, you know, we need to use namespaces for everything, I think that a lot of them don't really understand the nature of PHP. So let me give you a slightly patronising lesson on how PHP works, because I think it's important to get this, right? Now I have here a little assortment of coins, and it just so happens that they're all different, okay? No big deal. Now, I want you to imagine that each of these coins represents a different class on an application of yours. So maybe there's a class here for displaying a form. Maybe there's a class here for authentication. Here's one for reading the database, and so on, right? Now, there's a saying that we have in the PHP community, and the saying is, PHP must die. This is actually a technical statement, believe it or not, because it says something about how PHP works. You see, when you make an HTTP request to a PHP website, what happens is, is the PHP application gets the assortment of classes that are required for that HTTP request, and it loads them up, and then PHP stops. It dies. At least that instance of PHP for that moment. So, when you have a site, even if it's a really, really large application, let's say you've got an application with a hundred classes in it. Well, you're not going to load up a hundred classes when somebody arrives on a page. Surely, that would be a very poorly designed application. So typically what will happen is, you'll have five or six classes maybe, 
And when somebody visits that page, the page loads and then it stops. You hit refresh, it loads and it stops. Now, what namespaces do is they offer a solution to the hypothetical problem of what happens if when we're doing one of those loads we've got two classes that have the same name. That's a legitimate problem that could happen. The thing is, I've been involved in the web building game since 1996 and the amount of times that that has been a problem for me and by the way, I was top of Google for seven years for the phrase website repairs. I've fixed thousands of sites, I've built hundreds of them. And the amount of times that I have had the problem that namespaces solve is zero. And I suppose the most graceful thing I can say is perhaps it happened and I just cannot remember it. But I think that one of the challenges facing the PHP community right now is that there are certain developers who spend their time scuttling around the hen house looking for a hypothetical problem to solve and then when they solve it, it tends to be kind of over-engineered. Now as far as the Tron Gate framework goes, we have what I think is a truly modular framework. We have these self-contained modules with their own class loading system and we can call modules from modules and we can even have modules within modules. Now, if this bizarre hypothetical challenge ever came up, we would have workarounds on top of workarounds on top of workarounds before we had to even resort to namespace stuff. And guess what? The Trongate framework works perfectly with all of that namespaces bullshit anyway. I made a video about it not so long ago where I demonstrated how Trongate actually functions with packagist vendor autoload and all of that stuff better than the leading PHP frameworks. I'll leave a link in the description. But the point is that just in the same way as I don't have room in my life for a Kindle, I also just don't have room in my life for namespaces. It's just the way it goes. And so, if Trongate has any value, it's not because it offers all of these over-engineered solutions for every single hypothetical thing known to humanity. On the contrary, I want to strip away the bullshit. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.